You're listening to an Axe Church sermon. Axe Church is located in Camas, Washington. You can find out more about us at www.axecamas.org. Check out our other sermons and podcasts. You can find them on iTunes Podcasts, SoundCloud, and our website. This sermon was preached by Pastor David Robinson, who is the teaching pastor at Axe Church. We hope you enjoy the sermon, and we hope that the Lord blesses you through it. And Landers... Ann Landers was a newspaper columnist who would give advice to people who wrote her letters. She did this for like 47 years, starting in 19, I think, 55. And she would receive an average, an average of 10,000 letters a month. Okay, every month, 10,000 letters. So for those of you who are under 30, letters are, we, <laughs> there's paper and a pen you fold it up, you put it in a piece of paper, and you put a stamp on it, and a person carries it to somebody else's, on a pony, um, to somebody else's house. So that's the way we used to communicate. There was no other way to communicate. And they would, you know, and letters would write things in newspapers, which were these papers that they'd print all this stuff on, they'd come to your house every day, and you'd read them instead of just getting it off of your phone. It was an amazing time. Um, but that's how it worked. And she'd get 10,000 of these. People who wrote paper letters every month, and she'd read through them. And somebody asked her, um, you know, what was the theme? This was, she was an advice columnist, so I haven't mentioned that. She was giving people advice. She was people, their pro, they had problems, right? And somebody asked, what's the theme? What, what's everybody's problem? What's the theme? And this is what she said. She said, the one problem above all others seems to be fear. People are afraid of losing their health, their wealth, and their loved ones. People are afraid of life itself. Fear, panic, distress, Anxiety. Ann Landers saw this, saw fear or anxiety as the biggest thing that people were struggling with. And she was dealing with a lot of people who wrote to her. Now, this is not new. Uh, Psalm 94, 19, the psalmist says this. When my anxious inner thoughts become overwhelming, your comfort encourages me. The psalmist, thousands of years ago, is looking to God for encouragement, for strength, because he's dealing with these anxious inner thoughts that are overwhelming, could not handle them. It was that way then, and it's that way now. We are still looking for answers to how to deal with the overwhelming anxious thoughts that tend to overcome us. And God in the Psalms had an answer, and God today has an answer, but the world does not. The world does not. So what's anxiety? Anxiety is, it's fear. It's fear that seriously affects our minds and our bodies. It's worries about things that might happen or things that are happening, right? It's it's worrying. Fear, anxiety, worry, they're all kind of the same thing. Uh, when, did, when did people, human beings, start to experience fear? Well, let's take a look at that, okay? We're going to go back to the book of Genesis, and we're going to look at this. It, it starts in Genesis 3. If you have your Bibles, you can grab them. If not, uh, we probably don't have, we don't have the other chairs. The other truck wasn't working today. So there's probably not one in the chair in front of you. Um, you got a phone, or you can look on the screen. Uh, it says this. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. And they heard the sound of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded that you should not eat? He heard God. He knew he was in trouble, and he was afraid. Now, I wouldn't have been as concerned, um, feeling quite comfortable with my naked body. It's not a, no, I'm kidding. I'm I'm not. (laughs) I would have been afraid to. Why are you laughing so much? Um, now I'm sad. All right. Um, no. He knew he had sinned. He knew he had messed up. And the experience that came immediately was fear. It was fear. 
As soon as sin entered, fear entered. That's when it came, right away, as soon as sin came. Fear is a result of the fallenness of this world. Fear is a result of sinfulness. Adam and Eve, prior to that point, had nothing to worry about. Nothing to be afraid of. They, they were with God. They'd walk with God. They knew that God was taking care of them. Everything was taken care of. They weren't worried about it. They didn't even know that nakedness was a thing. They were just whatever, right? Doing their thing. And all of a sudden, deception, right? Sin and fear. Deception, sin, and then fear. Here's, here's a, a definition of worry, from Google. It says, a state of anxiety and uncertainty over actual or potential problems. Actual or potential problems. Worry and anxiety are all mixed up together. So for any of you who, who see the, the message about anxiety today and you're like, I don't think I suffer from anxiety. If you worry at all, you have anxiety problems. Anxiety and worry are the same thing. It's some kind of fear that we're letting in about actual or potential problems. Now there really is actual Real problems sometimes, the things that are happening right now that you probably should be afraid of, right? Some of you probably don't mind, like when you go to the doctor, some of you probably don't mind getting shots, right? Raise your hand if you just, it doesn't, it's not a big deal to you. Liars. <laughs> you people. Seriously, somebody is taking a needle and jabbing it into your body, and you're like, I don't care. Which is exactly what I lie about and pretend to when I go to the doctor every time. You know, I go in there and I'm, I, I, I hate them. Okay, they're sticking, you know, but I'm, I go in there and I'm like, yeah, doc, go ahead. You sure that needle's big enough to uh, get through this back up here? You might want to get that thing a little bigger, jam it in a little harder, you know, because I want to act like I don't care. But really inside, I'm like, this is going to hurt. Don't scream like a girl. Don't scream like a girl. No offense, girls. Just the scream is higher pitched. That's all I'm saying. Um, you know, and I'm thinking that I'm thinking, is, is it really worth getting this shot just to avoid tetanus, right? I mean, because I can deal with that. I, I would rather deal with that than the shot. There's some things we're afraid of. There's some things we're afraid of in the moment. And those fears are directly related to something that's actually happening, right? There's about to be pain. I'm a little bit afraid because I don't like pain. Okay. That kind of fear, those kinds of struggles, they're scary. They cause fear. Um, we got to be strong on the Holy Spirit. We got we to walk through and, and grit our teeth with some of that stuff and deal with it. But that's really not what I want to talk about and what we're going to study over these next two weeks. I want to talk about the kind of fear and worry and anxiety that exists about things that might happen, that could happen, that we don't know are going to happen, right? I think that's the kind of fear and worry and anxiety that Ann Landers was talking about. I don't think a lot of people were writing there saying, I'm about to get a shot. Tell me what to do. She couldn't write back fast enough, right? So what they were really writing about were fears and anxieties and worries about what might happen to them. And Jesus speaks directly to this in his Sermon on the Mount. He says this. He says, therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which it today is, and tomorrow is thrown in the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not worry saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Jesus is making a very clear point about where our trust should be. He's making a very clear point about where we should be looking for strength and power and provision. We should be trusting God, not worried about our circumstances, whether that's financially or, or clothes or what we're going to eat and drink and all that kind of stuff or anything else. He's saying there's enough, you got enough to deal with today without worrying about what might happen tomorrow. 
You need to be trusting God. So Jesus actually commands us, do not worry. Commands us not to worry. And I wish it was easy enough for us to be like, oh, Jesus is not to do it, so we just won't do it. But it's not that easy. Problem for many of us is it's not that easy. And we struggle with worry, and we struggle with anxiety and doubt and different things. Let me tell you a personal story. Um, when I was 22 years old, I had recently gotten married. Tiffany and I had gotten married. Um, we had just had Corey, uh, my daughter, uh, a few months before. And I was in school, and I was taking, I don't know, like 20-something credits, 21, 22 credits, I don't know, something like that, um, hard classes. And, you know, all these things were going on at the same time. And one night, I'm sitting there, I don't remember if I woke up from sleep or if I was sitting on the couch, and all of a sudden, just out of nowhere, I was just hit with fear. An incredible, overwhelming fear. I thought I was maybe losing my mind. I, I didn't know what was going on. It was, inc- it was so scary. It was so scary. I thought, you know, maybe, maybe Satan was attacking me. I didn't know what was going on. I wasn't even really walking with the Lord at the time. Um, but it, it was intense. So I go and I come to find out that what this was, was a very severe panic attack. And from that point forward for quite a long time, I struggled with panic attacks and fear of panic attacks, something people call panic disorder. I, it, was, it was incredibly debilitating. I couldn't do anything. I could not, you know, I ended up having to take like incompletes on classes in school. I, I, was, I was worthless as, as, even more worthless as a husband. I was, I was not great um, at doing much of anything. I think my wife was probably thinking, oh no, because she had just married me like a year before. And all of a sudden I'm just this useless person who can't do anything so wrapped up and chained to my own mind and body and fear. And it was, it was very difficult. I remember the weekend that that all happened, we came back to my parents' house, which actually is where we live now. Um, but we came back to my parents' house, and I remember the Huskies were playing the Ducks that weekend, and I couldn't even watch the game. Um, not because the Huskies were losing, which they were, um, but because the anxiety was so intense. By the way, we only lost that one game to the Ducks that year. We won every other game, including the Rose Bowl, ended up number three in the country. I told the whole anxiety story just for that. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> We did lose the duck, so I, I couldn't do anything. I'm telling you, I couldn't do anything. I developed OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. Uh, some of you have probably seen the show Monk. Um, it's not like that, really. I mean, that's a great show. He's a great, great actor, but that is not what OCD is really like for people. Um, but I developed that. I've had to be on medication, all, all kinds of stuff to deal with an intense, debilitating anxiety disorder. And if statistics are correct, there's a lot of you sitting here today who have similar experiences, who have had to deal with depression or anxiety in a major way medically, like it, like it affects your body. It's coming from somewhere else. It's, it's difficult, okay? It's tough, and you want to make it go away, and it's not easy to make it go away. Now, God has gotten me out of that through his power, through the debilitating part of it. I'm not saying I never experienced anxiety anymore. I still do struggle with anxiety this very day. But God, through his power, has got me out of that. Next week, Lord willing, I want to I wanna dig into that a little bit more, my, my own story and how God got me out of an anxiety disorder and things like that. Um, but I want to I wanna work not the medical anxiety side today, but the kind of anxiety that all of us deal with. Okay? So from, from what I just said, I really want you to understand that there is hope because I, was, I can tell you at the time, I, I thought it was over. I thought my life was over. I thought it was over for my, for my family as far as I was concerned, that, that they were going to have to go on without me, that I was either going to die or that something was going to happen, whatever. This was a long time ago. But God has brought me through so many things, so amazingly. And so if you struggle with anxiety, with medical and anxiety or depression, can I just tell you that there's hope, that I live a life, I'll be honest with you, I'm happy most of the time. I'm happy a lot, to be honest with you, because I'm hilarious. Um, my mom told me I was. <clears throat> um, and, you know, I have all of you, and I have my family, my children, and, and I, have, I have so much that God has given me, and I'm able to enjoy life and do things that I love to do, and, and you know, all of that kind of stuff. And I just want you to know that if you have anxiety, that kind of medical anxiety or depression, let me just tell you my first two things. We'll, we'll, we'll try to dig in this a little more next week, but my first two things are go see a doctor. Don't let this be a stigma that keeps you from going to see a doctor. Go see a doctor and get treated. It's a medical problem. It's a physical problem. 
talk to me if you want to talk to somebody about it. Others in this church who have struggled with this have talked to me. Um, I'm hoping that it's been helpful to them. I'm hoping that God has used my debilitating, intense, you know, horrible anxiety disorder to at least help some of you. I think that's why we go through some of that. Um, but but don't, don't believe that there's no hope because there is. Um, now, now, some people are like, oh, okay. He's weak. <laughs> right? Does anxiety, does my anxiety disorder make me weak? You bet it does. You bet it does. You better believe it. But that's not the only thing that makes me weak. I have all kinds of problems. I appreciate you not saying amen to that. I thought I might get a lot <laughs> of amens. The people who knew me the most down to the people who knew me the least. But um, if you think that an anxiety disorder makes me weak, you're right, it does. And yet I'm stronger than anyone as far as I know because I'm in his strength. Anyone that's not in his strength. I'm weak, but in his strength, I'm incredibly strong. It is in the moments in my life where God does the work when I'm weak that I have the most joy. I have, there have been Sundays where I have not had, where I have been dealing with anxiety, where I've had to take medication, where I'm just like, uh, I, my anxiety is through the roof, and I gotta preach. I gotta bring the word of God, and I'm sitting right here, and I'm thinking, I don't know that I can do this. And God gives me the strength and the power to do it. And I come up and I'll watch that, vi- that sermon later because I watch myself, because I am vain. No, I, just checking for quality, people, okay? <clears throat> and I'll be like, how is that possible? I know what I felt like five minutes before standing on the stage. How is it possible that I'm preaching with that kind of confidence and I can see the work of the Holy Spirit and there is nothing quite so joyful to me as knowing I can trust God like that, that he can work in my weakness. And so am I weak? Yeah, yeah, very much so. But God is strong. We'll get back to that in a minute. Let's talk about those of us who maybe don't deal specifically with an anxiety disorder, but we deal with what I would just call the human condition, just fleshly anxiety, okay? Because while I have a medical anxiety disorder, I also just worry sometimes, Right, Just have fears, and all of you do also. Right, Back to Adam and Eve in the garden, fear is part of the fall. Worry is part of the fall. And Jesus was not just talking to people with, with anxiety disorders when he gave the passage that we just read. Okay? Sometimes we just worry. Sometimes we just have anxiety. Sometimes we just live in fear. We can't get to sleep at night. We're sweating. Our minds are racing. We, can't fe- we cannot get rid of the fear of the unknown. We don't know what's happening, and so we're fearful, right? Finances. Am I going to make it? Are we going to be okay? Do I have enough retirement to live to 125 years old? That's how old I'm going to be, right? No, you're not, by the way. Most of you don't look healthy enough. Okay. Our children. Our children. What's going on with our kids? Especially they get older, they're off the rails doing who knows what. My kids aren't that old yet, but some of you do have that. They're younger, they're off the rails. I remember my, my son Ethan, he's like three years old, maybe three years old. And he, and he just got tired of the, things, the way things were being handled at the house, okay? He just, he just wasn't really big on it, okay? So he put on, this is, we were in Virginia at the time, living in Virginia, I was going to law school. Put on this big yellow jacket, which is kind of like this. He put on, he's like, I'm out. I've had enough, right? And he goes out the door, right? And we're like, okay, he's just gonna turn around and come, he's, he's two and a half years old, right? He's gonna be afraid. He just took off. We walked out and we just like started seeing how far, he, and he just kept, we eventually we had to go get him because he was gonna go, right? Kids, what are you going to do with these kids, right? But we worry about our children, our loved ones, our health, our mistakes, our relationships, our jobs, school, fear of embarrassment, or of pain, or of rejection, or politics, or the federal government, or whatever y'all are putting on Facebook all the time, all that stuff. We're worrying right? We're worrying. It's the normal kind of worry. We all have these kinds of fears and scripture speaks clearly and effectively to us about how we are to face that and deal with those kinds of fears. And the first part of it, if we want to deal with fear and anxiety is we got to know our own weakness. You need to know your own weakness because weakness is a fact. Y'all are weak. I'm weak. That's a fact. You know, there's a time when we know that, when we know that we're weak, a time in life, or we totally know that we're weak, and 
we don't mind. You know when that is? When we're children. When we're kids, kids don't think they're strong, right? Generally speaking, they don't think they're strong. They don't think they can face everything life has to offer. I'm going to pull myself up by my bootstraps, and I'm going to go crush it. And what? Kids, they can't reach the juice box on the top thing of the refrigerator, <laughs> right? Of course, Kaylee Kiros can't either. That's a different issue, but that's... <laughs> Love you, Kaylee. She's just not that tall, okay? I'm not saying... Um, <laughs> how, here's the thing. How are these little kids so cool with being weak? They're like, they don't care. They don't care. It's, uh, they, they, they don't have jobs, right? They, they, they aren't doing anything. They can't lift stuff that's heavy. They can't even wipe their own a- apples off before they... What did you think I was going to say? <laughs> Come on, guys. You wipe an apple off before you eat it. They can't do that for themselves. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. They can't do anything. They're kind of a joke, right? I mean, when they're first born, they're useless, right? They're pooping, they're peeing, they're screaming, they're down there, you know, their head's all misshapen. It's kind of a mess, right? And you're like, when is this kid going to get old enough to start doing the chores around here? Because that's what kind of the reason you have them, right? I mean, that, no, I'm kidding. People are like, I should not be going to this church. This guy's <laughs> terrible. I heard lawyers were bad, but this is really, really bad. No, they can't do anything, and yet, you know what? They're happy and content. They're happy and content in their weakness. They know that they're weak. They're not confused about it. They know that they're weak, and they're happy and content. Why? Because they have parents. Because their parents are taking care of them, and they are happy to be taken care of. They don't have such big egos that they don't need anybody. Except Ethan when he tried to walk away when he was two and a half years old. But most kids, they don't have these egos, right? They have these parents they're being taken care of. Why aren't we like that anymore? Because we grew up, and you know what we did? We started to believe the lie that we're self-sufficient. We started, we started to believe the lie that we don't need anyone, that we can take care of ourselves, that we're in charge of ourselves. And as soon as that comes up, all kinds of anxieties and fears start creeping in because guess what? You can't measure up to that. You can't control enough to be in charge of everything. Can can you guarantee the health, the financial security of your loved ones? Can you guarantee that? Are you strong enough for that? No, you're not. So what happens? Fear anxiety, because you're supposed to take care of it. That's what you've been told. You're self-sufficient. You pulled yourself up by your bootstraps. You're American, right? You know what you're doing. You're in charge. Nobody's going to tell you what to do. And at the same time, as soon as that, you take the, hey, go ahead and give me that shot right here. I don't mind. In your mind, you're going, I don't know. I'm a joke. I can't figure it out. I know that's the truth. And so you deal with fear. Anything you can't control, we can't, we can't do anything. Look, I can't even change a light bulb. Listen, yesterday, I go outside on my porch because the light on my porch is out, okay? So I go out there, and my, my son is standing there. I got the door open, the light on, and I start to, to undo. There's like these little screws that you undo because I want to get the light bulb out so I can change it. Okay, so I realize I got this glass stuff around. It's kind of like a cheesy... Uh, I don't know, outdoor light type thing, okay? These panes of glass. So I get it, and I realize I can turn it upside down. That makes it easier to undo these screws so I can take the thing. Well, I assume when the screws come out, the glass stays in. But it doesn't. So when I took the last screw out, the glass coming, big glass panes go push all over the porch. My son's sitting there like, you are a door. I was thinking, I'm teaching him, like he's going to learn how to take care of a house. Because I'm a man. And he's going to learn how to be a man. Look at how we do this light bulb thing. So let me make sure I'm gonna, and I'm doing this. And he's like, what a dork. How many lawyers does it take to change a light bulb? Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's, he's rapidly losing confidence in me. Um, you keep up the thing for so long, right? They, they, they eventually figure it out. Like, you're, you're not all that. But that's the point. I'm weak. I screw up changing light bulbs. Listen, we don't have strength within ourselves, by ourselves. We are not self 
sufficient. We are weak. And you're probably like, okay, this is great. I'm so glad I came to church today for you to tell me that I'm weak, useless, and whatever I could have been watching the tournament. Mm, Gavin, my bracket get all messed up, but instead I'm here hearing about how weak I am. Listen, it gets better, okay? So hang tight. We are weak, but he is strong. You've probably heard the song, Jesus loves me, right? We are weak, but he is strong. God is our strength. God is the one who makes us strong. See, we have to know who we are. The idea that we have our own strength and our own power is simply a lie. It's a lie. Some of you have probably been listening to to self-help lessons. You know, you put the ear prones in. You are powerful. You are amazing. You are going to crush it. I'm like, oh, yeah, I am powerful and amazing. And this person knows, right? They've met me. That's nonsense. You're not going to reach inside yourself. Like, find the power within. It's not in there, okay? It's not in there. The kind of power that we're talking about, the power to be in control, to be in charge, to do everything, that is not from the Lord who's telling you that. That comes from somewhere else trying to make you feel, sort of like what was said to Eve. God really say that? No, you'll be like God. You will find the power within you. That's not a message from God. That's not where it comes from. You're being lied to. You were never designed to be strong by yourself. You were always designed to be strong in Christ. That's what you were designed to be. Read John chapter 15. He's the vine. We're the branches. We have to abide in him. It's a relationship. God made us to be in relationship with him. He loves relationship. He is a trinity of relationship. We are in a relationship with him where he's the one who empowers us to be us. That's the way it works. But our anxieties come from us thinking that we have to be all the power ourselves. That we can do it all. By ourselves. It's, it's weird because we have no problem believing that we need the right macronutrients and micronutrients and carb, fat, this, that, blah, blah, in order to be healthy, right? Go anywhere and they're going to tell you all about the, the science, the, what you got to eat and how you got to exercise to be healthy. We have, we have no problem believing that our body to run right needs to do these things or that you got to put your money in this and these kinds of stocks and bonds and cash, blah, 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 and so that we can retire and be financially healthy. But when I tell you that to have a healthy life, to be healthy, the thing you need to do is seek the kingdom of God and get your power from Christ, we're like, whoa, I can do this by myself. I can do this on my own. I'll give lip service to, oh, yeah. I need the Lord, but I'll live like I'm doing it on my own. And I'll worry like I'm doing it on my own. And I'll have fears and anxieties like I'm doing it on my own. Like I'm not trusting him to provide. Why is it so hard for us to live in that truth? It's like telling a vacuum cleaner that it has the power to vacuum without the electric socket, right? Right? It does. We bought a new vacuum cleaner because we have two Huskies. Between the two Huskies, they probably shed enough each week to make a new Husky. Roughly. <laughs> right? Give or take. I mean, and I, I wish I was joking. It really, they, I mean, their hair is just coming out. It's a mess. It's a mess. It's probably a punishment. Um, but... So we have to have a nice vacuum, right? So we bought this vacuum, and this one plugs in and it charges up. But you plug it in for three and a half hours and to the light does whatever and it charges up and then I can use it for like up to an hour, it says. Yeah, right. Um, but I can use it for a certain amount of time. But what happens is once it's unplugged from the wall, I've, I've got limited time before it goes, right? I don't know if that's the noise it makes. I haven't seen it go out of battery yet, but let's assume that that was a great I- I- impression. Um, it's going to run out. And then what's it good for? Nothing. Until I plug it back into the wall, it's useless, right? It sucks. It's a vacuum cleaner, so I did the whole, yeah. Okay, I don't do puns a lot. This is why. You guys groan. Okay, it's useless, right? It needs the power grid 
in order to charge its own battery to be effective. It is not, does not have power on its own. Sitting by itself, it's nothing like branches and a vine. If the branch is away from the vine, what happens? Withers, dies, toss it in the fire. It's useless. If it's on the vine, what happens? It grows. It has fruit. It has whatever. Its strength is dependent on the vine. And we're dependent on God in that way. But we've believed a lie. We have to be plugged into Jesus Christ. We have to be plugged into God to run right. Without him, we are weak. In ourselves, we are weak. There's not the magic power inside of you. You wear a crystal around your neck and you say, you don't have any of that. That's not real. God is real. We were not made to be powerful alone. We were made to be powerful in him. You feel anxious. You feel unhappy. You feel unfulfilled. It's probably because you haven't plugged in to Christ. And you run out of juice. What's burnout other than that? We were getting our power from the wrong place. We unplug. Yeah, you might have a battery to go for a little while. You might have a battery to go for a little while. Eventually it's going to do, 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 do. And then you're out. And then you're trying to walk and you've got no strength. And unhappiness and unfulfillment and anxiety comes. But if you're like a little child, you know the strength of your father in heaven, you're going to depend on him. You're not going to think you can do it yourself. You won't start with that thought. You get your mind right. And that will help you reach to your spirit and not to your flesh. That's just the way it works. As a kid, I, I was in elementary school. We lived in California at the time. And I was in elementary school, and I <clears throat> went over to these kids' house after school, and they were kind of rough kids. Um, and they, I had this skateboard. It was like, this was like my prized possession. I had this nice skateboard, Santa Cruz skateboard, and, and uh, something happened where they basically, <laughs> this is kind of a rough family, okay? Um, they, they sort of conned me. They made me think that my skateboard had gotten stolen and that their older brother had gone and gotten it back for me, Right? And I was like, oh, good, my skateboard has found what They would never gotten stolen. They, they played me, right? Because I'm dumb, weak. I told you about that already. Okay, so they do that. And then they say, you have to give me something. So I had gotten this other, my prized possession was this pellet gun my daddy had given me. It's like a one shot, you crack it, you put the pellet in. Tink. Um, and so they were like, give me that. So I give him this thing. And then I tell my dad about it. And he's like, no, you've got to go get that pellet gun back. They're not, you're not doing that. Go get your pellet gun back. And so... I went back to school the next day. I told these guys, hey, I need to get that back. And they're like, oh, my brother's going to shoot you. I'm like, we're going to shoot you. Uh, and I'm like, oh, hey, that, that escalated quickly, right? Like, shoot me. I mean, and it was kind of, you know, there, was, there were gangs and stuff in the neighborhood. It wasn't the, it wasn't the safest place in the world. Um, and so I'm now, of course, I'm like 11 or 12 years old. I am just terrified that I'm going to get shot by these guys if I try to get this. This is a weird story. I'm just telling you, this happened, okay? This is reality. So I'm, I'm walking around with incredible anxiety and fear that I'm going to get shot if I try to get this pellet gun back from these guys. So I, I'm just de I'm dealing with it. I'm just struggling with them. I don't know what to do and, and whatever. And finally, I come to my dad, and I tell him, these guys, look, these guys are going to shoot me, right? Um, I can't get the hell gun back. He's like, let's go take care of this. He gets, he gets in the car, puts me in the car. He goes to their house, and he's like, give me the gun. They give him the gun. I never hear anything else about it, right? Daddy took care of it. Daddy took care of it. Because dad had the strength and the power to take care of something that you don't know how much anxiety I was in. I really thought these guys were going to shoot me if I tried to get this thing back. But yeah, my dad told me I had to get the thing back. So it was a rough thing because he was pretty scary too, <laughs> right? So I had, to, I had to do what he wanted to do or I was going to get it on this side, I had to do what they wanted to do, or, you know, it just was a mess. But my dad probably doesn't remember any of this because he's really old now, but. <laughs> yeah, also, I think he left, so. Um, God is like that. God is like, look, why are you walking around in fear? Why are you walking around in anxiety about what your enemies are going to do to you? Why are you walking around about what might happen to you financially? Why are you walking around worrying that you're not going to have what you need? You're not going to be able to take care of your kids or this is going to happen to that guy. Why did you come to daddy? Get in the car and let's go take care of this. That's God. That's who he is. But we want to walk around in our own anxiety and fears when all we'd have to do 
is go to God. And he's a much better father than my earthly father. No offense to him, but it's just true. Or any of us, right? Gideon was the weakest dude in his tribe. And the weak, his tribe was the weakest tribe. And he was the weakest guy in his dad's family. Okay? You're talking, you know, weak. Weak. But he defeated the army of the Midianites. Because God provided the muscle, because God loves to show his strength in our weakness. God loves it when we're willing to be that child and to be honest about who we are and have that relationship with him, that loving relationship with him. And he loves to act in those moments and give you the strength to do what you need to do. I can't do anything without him. And neither can you. Let me give you some scripture, a few verses. Isaiah 41.10, fear not, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Joshua 1.9, have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Isaiah 40.28-31, have you not known? Have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary? His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Listen, if you get this, you get life in a way that so few people do. People spend billions of dollars on self-help, on, on, on these gurus, on these folks who will tell you how to find the power within, all the rest of this. I'm telling you, that's all nonsense. And if you get this about life, you get it. You were made to live. Listen, you were made to live in the power of the Holy Spirit. It's where your power comes from. For those of you who are not Christ followers, who have not made him the Lord of your life, for those of you who have not believed in his death and resurrection for the forgiveness of your sins, who have not called upon his name, you are not living in the power of the Holy Spirit because you don't have the Holy Spirit and you won't have peace until you decide to become a Christ follower. The good news is you can do that today. You can do that right now and you can have the Holy Spirit, but that's, how you, that's who you all were designed to be. You're designed to be in relationship with him and to operate in his power. In Christ, you have the Holy Spirit. And what you need to do is walk in that and live in that. In the newness of life, the power of the Holy Spirit and peace. When I was walking around thinking those guys were going to shoot me before I went to my dad, I had my dad just like you have the Holy Spirit and I have the Holy Spirit. He was there. He had never gone anywhere. I had him. But I wasn't walking in that. I didn't come to him first. We go to God. We go to God, we go to God, we go to God. We don't walk off by ourselves. We don't sit there in our anxieties and wait two weeks of struggling and not sleeping before we're like, oh, you know, I should really probably take this to God. I should probably let him handle this. Or I've already taken it to him, but I clearly haven't trusted him. Because if I had trusted him, I wouldn't be worried about this. Because when I was a kid, I slept like a baby. That's why we say that. Why do they sleep like babies? They have nothing to worry about. They trust their parents. Unequivocally. Right? They just trust them. And some of us were, you know, made mistakes as parents. Some of us screwed up some as parents. And our kids still trusted us and slept like babies. Right? Some of you were thinking, my baby didn't sleep very well at all. That happens too, but that's a different issue. That's not because they're worried. Listen to what Jesus said to his disciples. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things I said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Jesus is saying, you have the Holy Spirit. You don't need to be troubled. You don't need to be afraid. You need to understand where your power is is coming from. God is our Father. He's our Father. Don't fight that because you want to be in charge. 
Rest in that. Because it's amazing. Have peace in that. That he'll give you the power through anything. Listen. If you've ever had to play basketball with a little kid. Like a little kid. Right? And they've got the ball and they're like. Mm, mm, uh, right? And, and it goes. Right? It can't, they can't lift and throw the ball high enough to get to the hoop. Right? You guys have seen Glenn play. You, okay. Anyway. <laughs> Kidding. I think he went outside. So he's fine. Little kids. And, every, and, and if you're doing that, usually what you're going to do is you're going to come over to that little kid and you're going to pick him up by the hips and you're going to put the ball in there and you're going to lift them up, right, to the hoop and you're going to let them put the ball in the hoop. And when they do that, they're super happy, like they did something. It's like, dude, I did that, okay? I'm the one who lifted you up there and gave you the ball. But they're super happy. That's us, not the person lifting. I know that's what you all think. You all think you're the hero. We all think we're the hero. Every Bible story we read, like, oh, yeah. That's me. I'm the good Christian. These other people he's talking about, those are the people that I need to hold accountable. No, no, no. We're the other people. We're the little kid. God is the one who's like, here's the ball. Here you go. We put it in and we're like, dang, I am so good. Like some of these kids do. They're like, yeah, I dunked that. Like, dude, you're two feet tall. I lifted you up there and you put the ball. But that's how, whenever you brag, whenever you have thoughts in your mind, like you've got to figure it out, whenever you won't trust God, you're like a two-year-old kid who God helped do everything, and then you took all the credit for it. And you know when you're the happiest? When you're that two-year-old kid that does that, turns around and gives dad a hug. Thanks. I'm strong in you. Yeah, I was able to do the thing, but my strength came from you. If you can live in that, if you can walk in that, anxiety is going to become less and less of a problem for you. The more that you know dad's got you, the less worried you have to be about anything. We're incredibly strong in him. He designed us to be so. Look, I want you to be free and to have peace. I want you to be happy. I don't want you to live in fear. I don't want you to live like you think you're some kind of Superman who can handle it all because you're not. You're not. Neither am I. Instead, I want to See Jesus as a superman. See, we're not the superhero. We're the dude being saved from the burning building. That's us. We need to be cool with that role and be like, thank you, God. Thank you. You've saved me. You've made me who I am. You've built me to be. You've given me talents. You've given me abilities. You've given me gifts. You've given me so much, such amazing thing that I can do. And all I have to do is get that cord plugged in. Vine and branches, right? All I have to do is say, it's you, God. It's you. And I get to do all these things. I get to have all kinds of strength. But the second that I pull that away, the second that I do it myself, which we have been doing since the fall, anxiety, fear. The next week we're going to talk about anxiety again. I'm going to take it in a little bit different direction. I'm going to give you a little bit more about uh, some of the ways that God has taken me through my story of intense anxiety and difficulty and some of the ways he's brought me to a point where when things are good, I can look to him and have that kind of trust because I want that for you. You can put all your worries and all your anxieties on him. Now listen, if you don't know Jesus, then all of the things that I've just said probably make no sense. And you're like, this isn't helpful. I'm not a Christian. I'm not going this way. Are you saying that people who aren't Christians can't overcome fear? For a while, there are all kinds of things you can do. People do all kinds of things. They self-medicate right? Whatever that means. Too much, fill in the blank. But if you want real peace, yeah, you need Jesus. We're not ashamed about that here. There is only one God, and he has only one begotten son, and his name is Jesus Christ. We're not ashamed about that. We want you to know that. If you don't know Jesus today, this is your day. This is your day to live in the power of the Holy Spirit. This is your day to have an understanding of your relationship with God and to see God, instead of rejecting him, to see him as your daddy, to be able to put your cares on him, your worries on him, and to have him take you through. That's today. Well, thanks for listening to that Acts Church sermon. We hope you got a lot out of it. If you did, we'd love it if you would comment or uh, give us a review or give the track a like. 
Uh, it really means a lot to us to hear back from people who have um, heard these sermons and have been impacted by it. So share your story with us, share what is happening in your life um, that this is speaking into. And remember, you can subscribe to our iTunes podcast or through SoundCloud so that you can get all of our releases as soon as they come out. Thanks again for listening, and we'll be back with more next week.